Amazing fam! <laughs> Righty ho! So I could be proper loud, proper in charge because the house is empty, it's middle of the day, don't got to worry about waking anybody up or anything. The wife and kid are out, the count is up, and I'm ready to make a video. I've tried making this video now four other times with mic issues, so the mic is probably not sounding as good as it usually does because I'm having to use the mic in the PlayStation camera. It's just my usual standalone mic, so I apologise if it doesn't sound as good as it usually does. Right, here we go again, take number five, and hopefully this time it works, because I'm getting a wee bit sick of this. But hopefully I've got the, my ideas really, really concrete now. So, here we go, a response video to Gotti360 regarding his commentary on what he terms to be the radicals. Radicals, you say? Hmm. Sounds a bit like fundamentalist. Sounds a bit like, you know, gatekeeperism. You know, people who, like, take one thing and condense it and condense it and condense it. And during the act of condensing, it becomes their identity. And they must protect that identity because identity is a hard thing to come by. To find yourself, to know yourself, to accept yourself. That's a tricky, tricky thing to do. You know, how do we actually find acceptance within a group if we can't find it within ourselves? It gets a bit philosophical. But then you also have to remember that that's what happens in everything, you know. Whether you be really deep into music, or you're deep into cinema, or you love like film noir, or you know, you despise the talkies, you know, or you think silent movies are, are terrible and why did that ever exist? Or you love politics, you know, you're like, a, you're, you're team red or you're team blue, you know. So all these things that come together, or uh, let's try the eggshells here. You ever heard of the whole religion deal? You know, and this is what I believe. This is central to my how I live my life. These concepts brought about by this particular book guide how I run my existence. And anybody that gets in the way of that is in trouble. You know, I mean they're. There have been wars over this stuff, okay? Because human beings form communities. And communities are lovely. It's great when humans form communities because we are stronger together than apart. You know, when humans move as one, we are forced to be reckoned with. You know, that's what we did. We hunted together. We got food for the unit. We ate, we ate the wild animals. Thus, we once we survived, we moved forward, we multiplied, we became a force of the entire planet. And we are now the dominant life form on this particular ball of mud and, of mud and rock and water. So these things to a certain degree serve us, but they also do us a disservice because we become emotionally invested in things that to a certain degree don't really matter because they don't affect our lives but they do affect our lives up here you know humans live we live in our heads because we're thinking creatures we don't just go i must make more humans <coughs> make more humans <coughs> you know that's what animals do animals go i must survive pass on my genes and make more that's not a conscious thought as far as we're aware, hum animals don't go thinking, I've got to make more little me's. You know, they just make more of themselves for the survival of their own species. And what humans do is we form these communities and we form the communities around ideas. And sometimes the ideas become bigger than the humans that created them. Like um, with gaming fans, what we do is we'll take this one thing and we'll go, gaming is cool. The coolest part of gaming for me is this particular game system. This particular game system, that is what I love. The games that surround it, its community, its systems, its bosses, its, its culture, its actors. 
becomes a solid hard ball. And anything that comes along and threatens the ball with a new outside idea is instantly mistrusted, dealt with scorn and negativity and hatred. Because, at some level, it's seen as an attack upon the identity of the people that have poured themselves into it. When really, it can only add to them. So when you're going to bring new things, and new things are always, generally speaking, a good thing, you know? It's like, do you want to spend your life eating smoked sausage, pasta and beans? Or are you going to eventually, you know, like, uh, have a chicken burger or maybe some sushi? So, yeah, that's what happens. We get fanboys, because fanboys go, right, this is my thing, I love my thing. I will defend my thing forever. Yeah? But Mr. Gotti raises the point of, we didn't have this back in the days, you know, of like, uh, like the Nintendo's, you know, your SNES and your Mega Drive days. You know, when we had the whole, you know, you know, Sega can and Nintendo don't. Yeah. You know why we didn't have that, Gotti? Because we didn't have the internet. We didn't have social media. Social media is one of these things that instantly makes everything better and worse at the same time. You know, it's almost like, it's almost, almost like a quantum state. You know, it's like it exists and doesn't exist at the same time in multiple locations. That's social media. It makes everything great and horrible in equal measure at the same time, all of the time and none of the time. <laughs> so you kind of need fanboys in one respect because you need that excitement, you need that hype, you need that driving force to get everybody interested. Everybody going, Ooh. but also when you have fanboys, you bring forth that negative attention from the outside. You know, you get people going like, uh, oh, look at these people here playing with these kids' toys. You know, gaming's for children. We don't need that. It's like, when you grow up and get a job and watch football instead or whatever is their line. And we're stood here going, but we love gaming. It brings us pleasure and joy. And there are people as young as, like, five that game and people older than me that game. I mean, I'm 45, and I've got mates who game who are older than I. Some of them by a significant margin. And we've all seen those stories of like pensioners that game and stuff like that. That, that, that Japanese woman who's like in her 80s and games every day, most of it online, and it's actually really, really good. <laughs> it's like, you know, various other, you know, gray gamers, you know who are out there doing it every day. It's like, what a wide, wonderful community of people. You know, it's like, we're men, we're women, we're non-binary, we're gay, we're straight, we're black, we're white, we're, we're all the rainbow, you know? We gamers, when we are at our best, we represent the best in humanity because anybody and everybody can be a gamer. All you need is the want to do it, right? And let's let's put it this way, right? When you're watching a movie, you're watching a movie. When you're reading a book, you're reading a book. When you're watching a sport, or you're seeing a film, you don't really have input into any of those things. Yes, they're very enjoyable. I guess they have the group. Ex a lot of these things also have. The group experience but you only experience them you have no you have no agency over the happenings to the largest degree yes okay you can go to a gig and you can sing along and you can have audience participation bits and maybe you'll be lucky enough to have you know be a metalhead and like do like crowd stay crowd surfing and maybe even stage diving if the venue lets you away with it but when you get right down to it, you have no direct way of, how can I put this, 
influencing your enjoyment of this of the entertainment medium that you are choosing to engage in at that time with those said activities however gaming is different because once you pick up one of these this literally changes everything there's a reason it's called a controller because you control what happens on the screen you personally are invested because you direct what happens you know if you fuck if you shoot someone in the head that that NPC has been shot in the head it's not that a director has chosen that for that character on screen to be shot and that's part of their narrative part of your narrative you did that you created that situation you made that action happen now it is just a video game it's not technically real but you did that you controlled it you had direct input into what happens that is what makes gaming different Daro Breen said it basically right gaming is the best medium because you can listen to a book you, you listen to an album you can read a book and it's not like the book will shut and go what are the principal themes of the book and you're prying the book open trying to get it so you can read the rest whilst if you suck at a video game you get denied access to advancing any further in the video game you will work for that content you know it's like a it's like how you have the whole get good thing and that's why emotions get invested into video games that's why humans get so embroiled in, in it it becomes part of their identity look at sports fans sports becomes part of their identity especially if you look at something like football you look at soccer fans and how they'll go like uh, you know I'm not talking to him he he's for that team but in every other respect they're they're the same they live in the, they could live in the same city they could even work in the same company they're both people they're born they live they die they have families they come from other families you know they're they're subject to the same changes in life you know they could have the they're both capable of having the same advantages and disadvantages you know but because there's that tribalistic aspect to humans they choose to separate themselves by the thing that they love so it's not so much got it that it's a positive and or a negative it's just the fact that it's life it's humans they're gonna be and humans are gonna be more or less what they are with whatever tools are available to them so if the whole Sega Nintendo thing was had kicked off now instead of then I think you would still have the same hardcore you know name calling gatekeeping debates and ridicule and name calling as we do now except it would just be Sega Nintendo and not Sony Microsoft it's only the tools have changed not the humans we are still basically the same you know hairless apes you know we've not changed that much over the thousands of years that there have been humans let's remember okay if you take the entirety of life on this planet as a as a year right all the time if you condense it down into the block of a year humans have been around for two minutes before midnight we're not that evolved yet i okay we've we're creating artificial intelligence we've been to the moon we've created art literature science we've written sonnets we've written plays you know we've delved the depths of our existence and we've we've, we've sent probes into space and, 
But we're not that advanced. Not yet. We still have a lot of work to do. And part of the work we need to do as gamers we need to learn to respect each other's loves. We may not like those things, but should we respect each other's loves and each other's passions, you know? I'm not really ever gonna play Halo, but I'm never gonna hate on another gamer for wanting to play that Halo because it brings them joy. Much as I would also hope to expect that they're never gonna hate on me for wanting to play Tony Hawk, for instance, because that brings me joy. And when you get right down to it, we're only here so long. Our lives as humans are finite. Let's find the joy where we can, you know? You wanna be into one thing or another? To my mind, as long as you're not hurting anybody, you do you, boo! <laughs> you love gaming? Go love gaming. You love football? Go love football. You want to believe that a purple toad rules the universe and every Thursday you have to walk down the street in just your underpants? As long as you don't push it on other people, you go right ahead. So, yeah, there are fanboys. There are fangirls. There are people that love this stuff a little too much. There are people that don't have, any other, don't have anything to love. And everything in between. Can't change it. The only thing we can hope to do is augment it. So where there are more people that love stuff, like me, I do this channel because I love gaming. I love talking about gaming, I love doing gaming. I love talking about gaming with you guys. And that's me. This is you. Let's try and just, you know, get along. <laughs> So in finishing Gaudy, yeah, there are fanboys. There's not a lot we can do about it. But the best thing we can do is hopefully not let them affect our love for what we love. And maybe someday we can bring them along for the ride. <sighs> okay, uh, before I close guys, I would remind you there is like four or five days left in the giveaway. As yet, I'm still not at 500 subscribers. So it's looking like that nobody's going to get to win the prize. Nobody's going to win because I'm not up to 500 subscribers. And that kind of bums me out. I wanted two years to win. Oh well, at least I got a few new people in here. Hello to all the new people. <laughs> Hope you are enjoying the content and tell your friends I exist. And uh, hopefully you'll give the Red Bubble store a look yourselves and maybe go, Oh, I fancy that t-shirt. That's actually kind of groovy. All right. I've rambled on long enough. Before this video gets to the 20-minute mark, I'm going to stop it right here, right now, by closing it in the manner that I always do with a hashtag support Scottish YouTubers. And, of course, as always, I never bother. <laughs>